Zechariah has shown yet another vision. Let's read Zechariah chapter 5, verses 5 to 11. Then the angel who talked with me came out and said to me, Lift your eyes now and see what this is that goes forth. So I asked, What is it? And he said, It is a basket that is going forth. He also said, This is their resemblance throughout the earth. Here is a lead disc lifted up, and this is a woman sitting inside the basket. Then he said, This is wickedness. And he thrust her down into the basket and threw the lead cover over its mouth. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were two women coming with the wind in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up the basket between earth and heaven. So I said to the angel who talked with me, Where are they carrying the basket? And he said to me, To build a house for it in the land of Shinar. When it is ready, the basket will be set there on its base. Some Bible versions talk about the word resemblance here, but the word sin is more, more what we want here. The sin is being removed to Babylon. So we might ask, why is a woman there sitting inside the basket in this vision? Well, because, you know, sin has a face. Sin is not just an impersonal thing. Goodness has a face. You know, God is a personal being. Those who seek life in God's way, we all have a face. We're all involved in this fundamental conflict between good and evil. It's not something that's taking place, you know, somewhere over there outside of us. We're in it. Again, this vision shows that evil's being removed back to Babylon. I mean, God has ultimate control. God only permits evil temporarily. The creation is learning what is and is not viable when you have a universe full of free beings. This is something not to do, you know. Don't put your hand on the hot stove. Across the Bible, Babylon is known as the instantification of evil. It's, it's the concretization. It's evil manifest in the real world. Babylon becomes the source of the attempted recreation. It's the remaking of the world. God made it one way, and now the devil wants to remake it in his own way. At the end, in Revelation 18, right before the final judgment, and Babylon's destroyed by God, at the end, Babylon is in very strong control and weighing down, putting its thumbs down on the consciences of men and women. So in this vision, when the basket is revealed with wickedness in it, and this woman tries to get out, the angel throws her back down in there. It's going off to Babylon. It's actually the removal of Babylon from God's people. It's a purification of God's people. It must have been very encouraging after all these years of Babylonian influence and exile to see this vision of the, it being packed up and sent back to Babylon. Now it says there that it's going to be set there. There's a house is being made for it. It's going to be set on its base and it's going to stay there. And that tells us that this battle between good and evil, it's not going to be an overnight thing. It's going to last for a while. There's a conflict between good and evil, and it lasts for a while. And so we, I believe today, are, are very, very close to the end of it. But everything that God has created is being undermined or remade in something the way the devil wants to remake it. The struggle between good and evil is going to be a long one, but we're near the end. So in the end, no one gets a free ride. We all are going to be aligning morally one way or the other. We're going to either align with self, or we're going to align with, with God's plan. Either we join God's covenant kingdom for good, or we align with self-service and basically, you know, you oppress whoever, whoever's in your way. Those are really the, the, two, the two final spots. Pick your spot because uh, there's going to be a final separation here. Separation from the Creator or joining to the Creator. I choose joining to the Creator.